What's going on guys? This is TM25MD and I have a Duelist Live for you guys today. Um, it will be of the 28th weekly TCG Esports um, Duelist Tournament. Um, I, didn't, I did do the um, 27th, last week's one, but um, I was in California for my brother's you know, white coat ceremony for, um, and to help him move into medical school. So I really wasn't able to, you know, play as you know, competitively as I would have liked, you know, everything was you know, kind of half-hearted. Um, so I only played like, you know, like one uh, one round of it and I had to go and stuff. So um, anyways, I did play in this week's and um, uh, just the good news for you guys, I will be moving, um, I will be doing consistent and daily uploads here on out now that I am back from uh, California. Um, <clears throat> so Duelist uh, Lives will be on a daily basis um, for those that have missed the content. So today, um, I bring to you guys, um, you know, a pretty good uh, weekly tournament. Um, and no, it's not because I won it. Um, I had spoilers, I did not win this week. Um, but we did have a pretty good uh, turnout, 14 players, actually, 2, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah, 14 players, you know, including uh, Grandmasters, um, Rai Guy, Alpha Century, I think that's it. Uh, but we also have some pretty good players, like, you know, Silver Agria, Death's Advocate, and Probable Blobs. How the Kissa is especially very good. And the infamous uh, Jogda, um, the Songhai Expert, as well as Colazos too, who usually cast, but since uh, the other caster was away, uh, there was no live stream. Uh, but anyways, that's that. We'll hop into some of the games. Um, Unfortunately, I did not have a, a round one buy, um, so I was forced to you know, play in the round one, so I was not guaranteed a top eight finish. Um, again, the Invitational has gone um, live, so last week and this week, um, depending on how you finish, you can uh, accumulate points um, to qualify for the uh, Duelist Invitational, um, which can be found here. Um, I will link that in the description, so don't you worry about that. So, you know, first gives you six, but uh, in five or second, depending on how many people show up. Um, so yeah, a great thing, you know, again, uh, come and join and play, you know, have some fun, test some decks, you know. Um, you know, sure there are points online, but you get free stuff nonetheless, um, so it's not a bad thing. Um, so first off, we're playing against Jogda, the infamous Jogda. So, um, <clears throat> I know he is one to um, to run uh, very uninteractive decks, as in, uh, except for his aggro list, but most of his decks are usually revolve around eight gates. Um, I stuck with the same two lists uh, that I used to win the 26th weekly, um, Casava, my mid-range Casava, and um, my wall banner list. Uh, which is pretty much uh, Euclid's list, except I do run Flawless Infection. Again, those deck lists will be in the uh, description. So he, it turns out he's probably going to be running uh, Burnhorn and... Uh, uh, what's it called? Eight Gates. Uh, two very uninteractive lists, so I, I know what I'm up against. So I'm applying a lot of pressure early on with... Um, <clears throat> with uh, Casava will be the key to victory here, especially with the uh, Phantasm. As we can buff up our Tigers uh, and our Thunderhorns at hand. So, yeah. Uh, being known for uninteractive lists, um, I know how to beat him, uh, pretty much. Goes for a turn one tech spike, smills me two cards. I assume he didn't have any minions in his hand and uh, no four drop um, to play because we denied that acceleration. So. Seeing two healing mystics, I decided to throw one of them back. We didn't really need it. Um, and since Magmar doesn't really have any positional spells, um, nor do their reach is pretty bad as well, um, I decided just to develop the Thunderhorn as I can play a Demonic Lore um, and chain all of his minions together. Um, so pretty good in my opinion. Should he want to accelerate into a Lava Slasher or a Mechantor, it won't get full value because... Um, <clears throat> The Slasher would also deal 4 to his face, which I don't think he would like to do. Um, so he does have the Slasher, and which he does use to get rid of my Phantasm. Fine by me, it does buff up, buff up my uh, Saber Spine Tiger, which is pretty good for me. 
<clears throat> seeing the demonic lure, I can easily move it here um, and pretty much hit him in the face. This does play into Flash Mercantor, but I don't think Flash Mercantor is the strongest of plays. Um, to be fair, because it wouldn't leave him with anything on board, honestly. I also did empty my hand a little bit, because we are playing against Starhorn, and um, he will just draw me cards, so I don't really need Spelljammer. Desolator is a fine card. Um, but playing uh, Sphere into Ping, we are able to clear the Lava Slasher and his entire board with one hit from Thunderhorn. Again, I think Thunderhorn is one of the best cards to be released this expansion. Um, but yeah, he smartly plays the Tiger in the correct order and moving his general away to clear my tiger, uh, my Thunderhorn. Um, nonetheless, not the uh, the end of the world. And I think he does play uh, you know, his BBS, giving me another card, so we are at a full hand, really. Uh, so things are looking good, we just gotta keep up the pressure, um, to be honest. <clears throat> so, I don't really care about this uh, Blood Tear Alchemist, I'm not a really afraid of it, so I decided to play the Healer Mystic to block his escape this way. Um, also plays around Mechantor, so if he wants to Mechantor this area, the Desolator, he's going to leave the Healing Mystic alive, and uh, you know, vice versa for the uh, Desolator. If he wants to Mechantor this area, he leaves the Healing Mystic up. He's also at 10, I'm at 24. Decimus Tech Spikes is not the greatest of plays, in my opinion. Um, so, he uses that second Tiger, because uh, he is getting rather low, so he wants to prevent as much damage as possible, um, nonetheless. But yep, he has a Blood Tier. Uh, BBS plus Blood Tear is able to mill my Desolator, um, but you know, it doesn't really matter in my opinion. I do not need the, the Phantasm, it is too slow, um, so I'm not entirely uh, fond of that. But I am able to keep up the pressure with my uh, and surround him. With my Tiger and my Desolator play, this does set up Revenant Lethal next turn. Uh, putting him down, we were off by lethal last turn by one, so if I hit face there, we would have left him at one. Um, so I'd rather clear the board um, and leave him at three instead, because Revenant does win. And yep, Jed's up, ends up just conceding, because pretty much Tiger, Punch plus Fear, Desolator plus Fear, you know, all wins the game. So we were able to get a pretty decent uh, victory off that. Let's go into the next list. Starting off pretty strong. Um, we will be using uh, the downside about going uh, uh, you know, winning the first matches. Um, the opponent, should he win the next game, um, have some information about uh, what you're going to run um, in game three. But I, again, he sticks with his burn horn, uh, convinced that he has to win with it, and uh, he's not wrong in that regard. He does have to win with his burn horn. Uh, burn horn is rather uh, you know powerful against. Um, my fave, my control list, um, you know, if you can pressure me early, uh, you can definitely win in that regard. So the key to success is by setting up a lot of gravity wells and, um, you know, walls just to keep him at bay um, and force him to deal with it. Um, he might be running things like Plasma Storm, not entirely sure. Um, but again, if we can get those early things, we can play like this. Um, so, I decided to play a, uh, not much of a play here, uh, but we did have the Mana Death Grip in order to ramp into our uh, Luminous Charge uh, to block his retreat. Uh, this positioning here allows him, um, it, you know, pretty much closes him in here, so he will be taking some sort of damage depending on what he decides to do. Um, but again, uh, he's not able to play a second 4 drop, really, uh, by playing that BBS. Also keeps our hand relatively full. Um, so. Moving forward, I'll probably um, <clears throat> uh, remove uh, or you know replace my Blue Conjurer as you know he will draw me cards, and between that and Corona, should have you know a reasonable amount of um, of draw. So I am able to mana Death Grip this. Um, yes, mana Death Grip still goes through the Force Field, um, <clears throat> and we're able to clear his board. Um, and I just pretty much back off because. He has to take the fight to me, or I'll just win this late game, hands down. Um, especially, we can play Grandmaster Emblem next turn. Goes for the Plasma Storm. Uh, so it looks like he is more of a, a mid-range style um, Burnhorn, or excuse me, Starhorn, with probably Decimus Tech Spikes. Um, Decimus Tech Spikes as a finisher, with a control-oriented mid-game with Plasma Storm, Slashers, uh, Sunsteel Defender. 
but having seen him play that Plasma Storm allows me to set up the perfect Emblem right now. Um, you know, Seeking Eye, probably searching for that second Plasma Storm. He probably runs two. Um, but we actually have a pretty good spawn. We only get one Bone Shield Barrier and four Gravity Walls. So pretty good here. Um, so probably looks like a Flash Mechanter. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Flash EMP. So yeah, again, a very control-oriented shell. Um, but I think we're in, in the driver's seat here. That is rather far away. We can abuse that. Um, and we can just pretty much hit him for you know, big damage. Um, <clears throat> with our Ghost Seraphim into a Luminous Charge. Um, all we need is a, you know, a, uh, a Winter's Wake and this game is over. Um, even without Winter's Wake, we do represent 13 damage on top of Warbird um, to his face. And this EMP cannot move unless he plays another EMP to dispel himself. And without any positional based um, spells, he's in a very tight pickle here. But use the Tiger to avoid the Emblem. Um, not bad in that regard. Um, a second EMP would pretty good. Will be pretty good for him as it will allow him to trade with my Ghost Seraphim. Um, but Cantor, you know, not bad. Uh, it does clear this. He is fearing a Winter's Wake, and he does the best job he can to that. Um, and he's able to clear this. But <laughs> uh, between that and another Ghost Seraphim, I don't know what more he can do. Uh, quite honestly, so. Uh, what I do do is move back, play around the Cantor a little bit, um, and I just decide to play this uh, Blue Conjurer in his face. It is out of reach of the EMP, and I am to get another two damage ping in on him, putting him down to six. He is on a timer now. We do have Warbird every turn. We pull off a Trinity Wing from the Blue Conjurer, and that's pretty much Warbird plus uh, the, the Lesson of Power and the. Uh, General hit should win the game. Chromatic Cold also wins the game. Um, and should any of these minions stick, um, those will win us the game. So, uh, but he uses the Lava Sasser, the Body Block. It is a 4 1. Um, so any sort of removal, which we do have with Frostburn and Warbird, wins us the game. So, and yeah, it's a little BM on my part. Um, but actually, you know, I think I needed to be on there in order to, or I needed to play the uh, Seraphim in order to get it off. I might not have, um, but I thought that was the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, Blue Conjurer again <laughs> wins the game. The Conjurer didn't really pull us anything up to win the game, but it did provide us with the amount of draw that we needed uh, to keep our, uh, you know, our pressure high. Um, but yeah, the early Embla was pretty good. Um, and his early Plasma Storm did cost him, though he did have EMP to protect himself from the um, <clears throat> from the uh, from the what's it called from the Embla walls. So he did pretty, he did a very good job of um, managing my walls, you know, keeping them to a down low where Winter's Wake would not be that effective. But um, keeping the pressure on, we were able to come up victorious. Maybe if he was playing a faster list, he could have overwhelmed us early. Um, but, you know, he was playing more of a mid-range, and uh, we were able to, you know, keep it relatively close um, until the end. So, a nice 2-0 victory um, over, you know, Jogdo, who's a very strong player. Um, one of the, probably the best Songhai player right now uh, in the game. Um, so, good games to him. Um, so, next up, we got uh, the top 8 match, the well, not quarterfinals. Yes, the quarterfinals against Silver Agria, who's a pretty uh, good uh, S-Ranker. He just hit S as of late, um, <clears throat> and he's known for running very fast and aggressive lists, as you will see um, soon. So, let's look. I always like to lead off with my Abyssian, pretty much to gauge what my opponent uh, is trying to play. And since I know he is one to play um, <clears throat> faster lists, both aggro uh, Vitruvian and Agro Banner to S rank. Um, I know that my sustain can uh, hold him off. Um, I don't know if he was running a fast obelisk, so I decided to hold the Light Bender in my start hand. Um, but it turns out it is an Iraqi Headhunter list, um, so I would like to hold on to the Light Bender for should that get buffed up to you know, astronomical levels. Uh, we don't want to take that all that base damage, to be honest. Um, so I decided to turtle up and play the Phantasm uh, behind me. Um, could have been playing around Bone Swarm, but I don't think Bone Swarm would uh, be that beneficial. I didn't want to run too forward and you know, just get smacked. 
Um, I play around Rasha's at that. You know, I think Rasha's a little bit more likely than Bone Swarm, but you know, he has the Bone Swarm. Um, seeing as aggressive as he is, um, that Bone Swarm is his entire play. Though I do think he should have played the Science first. Um, science first wish first. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, that don't really matter to me. Um, I just decided to play the Desolator and take this tile. I don't want him to accelerate into six mana. Um, and, you know, play something like a Mauler Healer or, you know, some Tiger Science Sec Queen Wish plays. Um, fine by me. So it is another Iraqi Headhunter. I'm kind of scared at this point, honestly. Um, so it is a Blaze Hound that's going to buff up both of the Headhunters, you know, for damage. Um, but he ends up facing the Desolator, which is a pretty good play because it does um, mill it because of the Blaze Hound. Um, so I decided to make a pretty uh, cheeky play here. Um, I knew I was going to take three, but I would might as well clear his board and have him take three as well. So I decided to play the Demonic Blur, the Grasky Agony, um, and play the Ooze. I think it's a little bit more offensive. Save the Healing Mystic for later. Allow him to dive in on me, and, and I can you know, heal up with my Void Pulses, my Desolators, and my Healing Mystics uh, mid to late game. Um, so I think I'm pretty solid in that regard. So I decided to play the, um, the Ooze. I, seeing how fast he was in the Rocky Hand Hunters led me to believe that he is running a deck full of opening gambits. Um, so I didn't think he would be running something like Thunder One, uh, but I could be wrong. Though, again, uh, I, why I played the um, <coughs> Ooze uh, Protected was because he could have something like Valsius, right? But he does place the Spelljammer and it causes them to trade, um, which is you know pretty fine by me. I know I win this late game with Desolator and um, Healing Mystic and Spectral Revenant. Um, though I had to be careful with Spectral Revenant. He could be playing something like Spirit and Mirage, so I should play um, Spectral Revenant only for lethal and or if I'm uh, you know, vastly ahead on life, like 20 plus health alive, um, 20 plus health on my general. Um, so I could lead the Dervish up and play a Spelljammer of my own, quite honestly. Um, again, with all the healing uh, and chip damage I have between Void Pulse and Desolator, this should be a pretty much game for me. His entire turn is Blood of Air, um, so uh, he, all he can do is play Blood of Air and <clears throat> uh, his Bloodborne spell. Again, don't want him to take anything uh, too risky. You can play this game kind of slow. Um, so I don't. I just play the Desolator and the Zoroloth, force him to use some removal. Use that uh, Blood of Air. That's the Blood of Air, the uh, Desolator. This will proc and give me a Fiend. Uh, which is pretty big, and you know, I'm pretty okay with that, honestly, because uh, I do have Void Pulse and um, and Desolator on recharge to uh, you know, chip him down some more and keep myself, you know, at a reasonable amount of health. Mm -hmm. Can't really afford to go face since I do have a couple big things on board. Um, as he plays his third Iraqi Headhunter, kind of scary, and goes for a Tiger second wish play, which is kind of uh, kind of greedy in my opinion. Um, does activate my Zeraloth. I was expecting him just to uh, trade in there, and honestly, I think he should have moved the Saber Spine Tiger up once, so my Zeraloth um, can't just you know freely move in. Uh, but <clears throat> I am able to. Uh, I do have lethal here. Um, this represents six damage um, plus Void Pulse eight, um, and you know I think I played a Blastery Agony, which was nine. Or excuse me, eleven. And I could play like another death save if I wanted to. So yeah, pretty good game. I knew I would win the late game simply because my deck is more oriented towards the late game than his, which seems to look to kill your opponent around you know five, six, seven points, um, which is straight out of hand damage. So I knew in that regard, um, I just had to you know, try and make it and you know, control his board relatively well while chipping him down. <clears throat> Though we did not draw any revenants that game, so kind of uh, unfortunate. But we didn't need them anyways. So, game two. Uh, again, I, I figured he would probably go with uh, his aggro list again. Um, again, with the same game plan in mind, try and get to the late game and beat him with um, my walls, my emblems, my Pecondrus, my Ghost Seraphim. He only has three Blood of Air, really, so the rest is probably minimal uh, spells outside of the second wish that we saw early, earlier in the game. So, we got a pretty uh, decent opening with uh, Gravity Wall and Frigid Corona, I assume. 
So we'll just take this tile, play here, and I like this positioning because it does um, <laughs> give me access to pretty much all the orbs, really. Or this orb and this orb. So we want to play something here. I have something that can be relative, could be in the relative vicinity of uh, what we just played on this tile. Get a Winter's Break, it's rather early, we're only on 3 mana. So we'll probably throw that back. Um, he actually uses a Tiger on a wall, which is you know, kind of surprising. Um, but we take those, you know. Um, I don't think the walls are too much of a concern this early in the game. If there was like, you know, around 6, 7 cores, I would say, yeah, maybe use the Tiger to clear one of the uh, graphic walls. But, um, alas, I don't think it is. We do get a uh, Mana Death Grip. So we're able to accelerate um, into the. Uh, we're able to accelerate um, or ramp up a little bit. Um, so what I like about this is I am on five now. So next turn I'll be on six, um, and I do have direct access to this orb, so I can play the Ghost Seraphim plus uh, I don't know a Winter's Wake or another Gravity Wall. Plus, um, I do have a lot of options next turn. So he does play the. Flame Blood Warlock takes that ore for me, kind of sucks. So I, my uh, my plan of using Ghost Seraphim uh, next turn goes out the window. <laughs> um, but if we top deck a Frostburn, we'd be Gucci. But we do not top deck uh, Frostburn again. We do run three Frostburns in the list. So um, the only way I can uh, you know pretty much prevent this damage is play the Gravity while Blind. Um, and pretty much just run away. Uh, clear the Flame Blood Warlock while I'm at it. He unfortunately gets a bad Iron Dervish spawn, so uh, plays into the Warbird. Um, personally, if I were him, I would play the BBS because the wall was above him. So uh, it would guarantee, oh, well, pretty much, you know, increases odds of, you know, uh, having one not spawn underneath him. But, you know, that, you know, you can't, you can't really rely on that all the time. Um, but we're able to delay the inevitable or delay his, um, his offense uh, as quickly as possible. Um, what I think he does do now is equip a second wish that was revealed in the first game. Along with a blaze hound, if I recall. Yep, there's a blaze hound. And a um, Scion second wish, and we're going to be eating seven here. Um, if he did not clear one of the walls, we would have had lethal, but with Winter's Wake plus the... Um, Plus the Heart Sister is only uh, excuse me, 2, 4, 6, excuse me, 4, 8, 12, 15 damage, if I recall. So I just decide to body block here, um, go for the Winner's Wake and clear this. And um, unfortunately I can't clear this um, because it is out of reach, but I, I can manage uh, pretty well. Mm. So the reason why I moved one here and one here was to play around Blood of Air can't be used to, you know, like hit this one or that one, you know, vice versa. Um, but if you were to use uh, Blood of Air, it would probably be on this Ghost Seraphim, and if you did use the Blood of Air, that would be game. Blood of Air would lose in the match. Um, I forget what that card is. It looks like a Repulsor Beast, if I remember. That is a Repulsor Beast, buffs this up, so um, he would need two more buffs in order to kill me. So um, he would need, I don't know, Blood Tear Alchemist and a Healing Mystic, I think. That would have won him the game, but uh, he didn't have it. Um, since we do have Lethal, we have 8 here, 10, and 12. So again, our game plan was to get to the late game and uh, beat him with our you know, superior late game win conditions in um, Ghost Seraphim, which is Wake, Grandmaster Emblem. Um, so yeah, Chromatic Core being able to finish off the game. Thankfully, uh, his aggression, he, he needed to be that aggressive because uh, he probably knew um, going into the late game he would not win the late game, um, so he needed to beat us as quickly as possible. But anyways, moving on to the semi-finals against Soramir, uh, a newer face to the tournament scene. Uh, it's always good to see newer players, um, or newer faces, I don't think he's a new player, but I think it's good to see new players come to the tournament scene. It's a great time, play a lot of decks, have a lot of fun, and, you know, there's only good that can come from it, as, you can, uh, as there are prizes um, involved, so... Um, and it also helps you develop as a player. <clears throat> 
So, yep, we're playing Sormir. I forget what his two decks were, but we'll see in just a moment. Uh, it turns out he was Vought, so my guess would probably be like a mid-range stylist. We are kind of favored in this list, as they, uh, Vought doesn't really have um, answers for Desolator. Um, outside of Thumpening Wave, which is the only transformation removal he has, which they usually don't run more than two. Um, so, th in that regard, uh, we are kind of favored with our Desolators, keeping ourselves relatively healthy. Um, we do not have a turn one play, despite having ten turn one plays in our deck. Um, so I decided to play the Tiger, take this tile, and threaten this tile, and try and get, you know, um, like a Desolator plus, or a four drop plus, um, a 4 drop plus like a sphere play. Um, that's what I was kind of aiming for next turn. I knew this revenue would be good in the late game, so I think I hold on to him next turn. Um, so he just uses a natural selection, which is you know, fine by me, because that's um, one natural option that he does not have, or a uh, Thunder Um uh, I do not need the card draw as I have uh, Desolator in hand. I think I go with the Thunderhorn here. I you know, if he plays a second natural selection, he's kind of behind um, on board. So I'm you know, pretty okay if he has the second natural selection, which I think he does have, if I recall. I think this was more of a control list. Um, I think talking to him after he was playing with controls. Maybe I think this is flash potential. Okay, it is flash potential. Um, so, you know, we take four there, but, you know, it's still evenly traded. Um, hmm. I was pretty fine with what happened. I played the second Thunderhorn in his face, you know, threatening some damage. Uh, hit him for two, and play a Void Pulse, honestly. Um, as we can keep ourselves relatively healthy and put him uh, in the back. Uh, we do have Desolator. I didn't think Desolator was the strongest of plays, uh, as he had, um, you know, it is an empty board, so I think that's the best time to play Desolator. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty okay with what happens here. Uh, it turns out he is uh, Drogon. He has Drogon. Um, which is kind of scary, you know, as he's able to clear my uh, Thunderhorn, but he is down to 11. Um, so I was just pretty much fine with playing uh, Tiger uh, and pinging this, and playing uh, Healing Mystic over here, playing around Mechantor, get myself up to you know, around 22, get myself around 20 health. That's how we'll win this game um, in apply pressure. So if he does play something like Earth Sphere, he can't develop anything else, um, quite honestly. I think he does play the Earth Sphere. Yeah, he does play Earth Sphere, but surprisingly, he does not clear this, um, this healing mystic, honestly. So, you know, I was pretty okay with that. Um, I did not want to play Red Man right away, as he was pretty healthy, you know, 15 health, you know. Um, I'd rather just play the, um, uh, the Desolator and the. <clears throat> uh, I didn't think Phantasm was that, you know. Powerful because he could have just like Plasma Storm and clear it before he develops anything, which I guess wouldn't have been a terrible play because um, he wouldn't have been able to develop any uh, any minions as well um, should he play the Plasma Storm. But I'd rather just get rid of those buffs. Um, he doesn't have BBS going on and play the Desolator. You know, I did not dispel it, um, and this tile was open, anyways. Um, so Lava Slasher, you know, not the strongest of players in my opinion. <clears throat> and a young Silphar, which, you know, is not really that threatening, honestly. Um, I don't think we need the Zeraloth, quite frankly. Um, as I am able to ping this, I think, and able to clear that. Uh, clear the Lava Slasher. Uh, I did not want to use the Revenant uh, just yet, honestly. I'd rather keep up the pressure with Desolator um, and bring him down to... Uh, low enough health where Revenant wins the game. Um, so I'd rather develop the, uh, the Ooze and the Desolator. This positioning plays around Mechanto, and if he does want to play Mechanto, that will probably be his turn. I did not want him to play something like Double Thumpening Wave, uh, which is a possibility as he hadn't, hasn't revealed it yet. Uh, so Double Thumpening the Wave would have been 12 damage, and I, I really did not want to play around that enough. Um, so it is another Slasher, and I'm fine with that. Um, uh, he's also out of Earth Sphere range, um, so uh, I think Revenant just wins the game here, I think, if I recall.
um, or back-to-back -back Revenant should win the game. So I played the Revenant uh, kind of out of reach, playing around the counter a little bit. I also play position position my general here, so uh, he can only move here or here um, uh, to play around um, to get out of this thing's reach. Uh, maybe playing the Revenant here would have been a little bit better. Um, slight misplay on my part, but um, with the second Revenant in hand, um, we should have this game win. Not should he have, unless he has another uh, Earth Sphere, but I do not think he has the second Earth Sphere. Uh, but I think even if he did have the second Earth Sphere, we'd be pretty okay. Uh, he actually has Grandmaster Kragon, so that's actually looks more like a control list. But again, that's not enough to uh, save him, as we can just uh, win the game with Punch plus Spectral Revenant. You know, so, a uh, pretty straightforward game. Interesting list that he's from. Uh, Drogons with, uh, with Revenant. Maybe an evolutionary Apex list, who's to say? Um, so yeah, let's go into the second game. I would imagine he would like to stick with his list, but he ends up switching to Passable. Um, and uh, I guess he figured that would be a little bit better. Maybe he's running an aggro list, maybe he's running Lurking Fear. I don't know, who's to say? Um, that's the scary part of, about newer faces to the um, tournament scene, is you don't know what they'll play. Uh, whereas like someone like Minmaxer, who's always been running with the same aggro Riva, plus uh, his Arcanus Kara, and as of late his um, you know, Burn, Cassiva, plus Arcanus Kara, you can kind of predict what he has. Um, so, our play was pretty straightforward. This might be a creep list um, with Obliterate and you know, Cadence and you know, Juggernaut. Uh, so, we've got to be wary of our life total there. So, our play was pretty simple just mana death grip plus uh, Fidget Corona. As I can play, uh, Blue Conjurer behind me. Uh, in retrospect, probably playing the Blue Conjurer here would have been better to threaten uh, you know, these two tiles and potentially face and you know, trade uh, with whatever he decides to play. He decides to play a Juggernaut, um, but here we cannot clear, um, as it is only 4 health, um, and the, uh, the, uh, the Blue Hunter can't reach it. Clear it, but we are able to accelerate into 7 mana, um, and play our Ghost Seraphim. I do not want to waste the Aspect of the Shimzar, I'd rather use it for something like Spectral Revenant, or, uh, Abyssal Juggernaut. Kind of scared of what this guy's list because he was able to beat Bry Guy, Grandmaster Bry Guy, 77. Um, so I guess these lists has a couple of tricks up their sleeves. And I, um, after seeing that, I didn't watch the actual uh, games he had with Bry Guy, um, but he was good enough to you know beat him. So I was kind of scared of what he was kind of running. Um, but he does play a Breath of the Unborn, so maybe a control creep list. Um, with the Primus Shieldmaster, might be Doom, uh, might be a Doom list. Um, tough to say, um, but we do have an immense amount of damage, um, <clears throat> and a second Ghost Seraphim, so we can play a second spell for free. Um, so we're able to lock him down, play the Ghost Seraphim over here, uh, pretty much hit him for 8, play Warbird, and the Gravity Wall, so we got quite the threats here, um, as well as Heart Sister, so if he does decide to, you know, Demonic Lore, um, them away, or like, you know, demonic lore plus you know punish. Um, we do have a response and are uh, able to finish the game because we do have Warbird on the fresh next turn plus Criminal Cold plus our face. Uh, so this game is um, you know likely to be ours unless he had two punishes. Um, so it was likely ours, but actually he has two demonic lores. Um, but. Even with the Void Pulse, that is not enough to save him, um, as this is 8, 10, 12, and 14 damage. Um, so pretty good in that regard. Par Sister for the win. Par Sister is one of the best cards Vanar has to offer, especially when used in Fae. Um, so pretty cool there. Um, you know, we've been uh, flawless up until the finals, so not bad. <laughs> So yeah, fun games. So next we'll be going up against the winner of Improbable Blob and Pow. Turns out Pow did win. Um, so we'll be playing Pow in the Kissa in the finals. Um, it is a rematch. I did lose to him once in the finals uh, a few weeks back. Um, so I kind of want to get revenge, you know? 
Um, so I guess you guys already know how this goes. Uh, you can see it right here, but you know, it does go to game three. We'll start off again with our, um, our mid-range Casaba. So I think he does have two championship ribbons. Um, obviously this will make it his third. Um, but yeah, Powell's a pretty good guy. I talked to him um, on, on occasion whenever he's online and talk about, you know, um, you know, Lion R, mainly Zoran and Abyssian, but we also talk about our, you know, our disdain for Van R, but <laughs> we ended up both bringing um, Faye uh, to these games, so you'll see that in, uh, in just a bit. Um, he doesn't have a turn one play, so I don't know if it's he's running his infamous golem list. Um, he's actually not running his golem list because his golem list does not run draining wave, but um, we do get the proc from the uh, from the Zeraloth. Got a 4-4 Fiend for two, which is pretty good in my opinion. Um, and you know, with the amount of healing, draining wave is not a bad tech card in uh, heals event because with the amount of healing she has, um, you know, it's not really that bad. So what I do to decide to do here is I do have access to 5 mana with the Tiger. Um, the downfall about the Sunrise Park only has one attack. Um, so we're able to clear it for free, kind of, with our Taiga. With our Tiger, excuse me. And develop the Fiend here and uh, can't really play around a whole emulation. So um, with his lack of board presence, I decide to, you know, might as well punch him, right? And we have a 4-4 four, four and a 3-1. Um, this does play around Decimate. He would only be Decimating uh, one Tiger, which is not really worth it in my opinion. Um, and he does develop this uh, Sunforge Lancer, which is pretty good. We are able to clear that for free. Um, so he does decide to let this live and allow himself to go up to 4 health. Um, slight misplay by me here, actually. I was debating about playing the Phantasm and the uh, uh, Zerlot, as you do see, I say oops here. So I give him plus one more, I give him one more attack, honestly. I ended up not going with the Zerlot play. Um, but I do decide to keep him here, and as a result, if he had 4 attack, I probably would have punched him. Um, quite honestly. But since he has 5, it's a little scary to hit for that 1 extra damage. So uh, because of my misplay, I did not um, I did not punch. But he has a circle of life, so I guess it was a good thing that I did not play. Um, so this will be a very late game um, <clears throat> sort of game. Um, see who has the better of uh, the late games. His is probably something big with like Grandmaster Zier, some EMPs. Um, I don't know what else you can run. Some, some Imperion's claim. Um, that's also pretty good in the late game, especially with his general at 5, so I'm probably desperately looking for my life vendors um, and get that attack buff out. Um, but I do want to keep him surrounded. Um, he does have only 6. I did misplay there. Um, I thought he was going in on 7 mana uh, and he could play an EMP. He has been known to run EMP. Um, but I should have played the, uh, seeing that he only had 6 mana, I should have played the Thunderhorn and kept him uh, entirely um, entrenched. But looks like he is a very late game as he is running, um, uh, you know, Sundrop Elixirs and uh, Circle of Lifes. Um, as he does run Imperium's claim, um, spoilers alert. Um, so he will be using that against us and Decimate. I know he runs Decimate. He's, he loves his Decimate. I remember talking to him about him on multiple occasions about how much he loves his Decimators. Oh, excuse me, his Decimates. Um, but yeah, we were able to play uh, Decimator again. Uh, and I decided just to Tiger him, really, I think, to be mana efficient. Yeah. I decided Tigering him to be mana efficient. Or, excuse me, I decided to Tiger to keep himself you know, relatively entrenched. Maybe using the Tiger to go face would have been better. But I think he does reveal the Imperium to him. Um, and also killing my Phantasm. Maybe playing my Phantasm out of reach like here or here um, would have been better. Um, so you can't get that much value out of it. But he decides to hit me for 5. He knows he's at 5 attack and he has a ton of healing. Um, so pretty good. Don't need the Grass of Agony as his minions will probably be very big at this point in the game. So I decided to play my uh, Phantasm out of reach and pull out Body Block with a Desolator. So if he wants to destroy it, it has to be with another Emperor on the um, And I do play Thunderhorn. And again, playing around Decimate using it to Body Block. So if he wants to hit this, he'll have to take another 4 damage. So that's pretty good in our, in our sense. Another Sunforged Lancer, kind of scary. 
second circuit of life, also kind of scary. He's at six attack. Um, kind of, you know, wishing I didn't misplay there, but you know, we gotta live with our, our decisions. Um, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, we can clear this with uh, Desolator plus Ping. Uh, we do not have Revenant, um, so we need to find a way to keep ourselves relatively healthy until then. Uh, so I think playing Desolator in a similar position, more aggressive, um, with our Phantasm a little bit. Keep it relatively close, just in case we can get some uh, sneaky kills in. Um, also playing around, always playing around Decimate. Also playing the Spell Jammer, as it is buffed up to 5 attack, so if he wants to hit it, again, he'll be taking 5, and, will we, and we will be blocking this, um, this tile here. So, plays the Scintilla, um, and Holy Emulator, that's a lot of damage, it's kind of scary, uh, but the, <clears throat> the Spell Jammer does live, uh, thankfully enough. As he is very threatening, he is very healthy. Um, and we are very low, <laughs> um, so we don't have to need the Zerala because we are at um, we are at uh, uh, full hand, um, so we don't need the Zerala. But finally, we draw the Lightbender. I do think this is the time to trade in our Phantasm and bring this until off with the Bloodwind spell. As you can see, I make it kind of a questionable play, but I think it was the right play in the long run um, since he's a general is down to two. Um, I decided to make a cheeky play like so. Instead of healing myself up for two, decide to heal the spell jammer and keep it around for another turn, so that potentially represents 10 damage to his face. Um, and I do think um, since he is running Zervan, his out of hand burst um, is rather limited, so it's usually probably like a two, uh, excuse me, a you know, up to a five mana play and holy immolation. Um, whereas, you know, Arjun can run like Tiger, Roar, Holy Emulation for 9, so I wasn't really concerned of 9 out of hand damage um, from my opponent. Um, but he is, you know, playing another claim, kind of sucks. Um, and he does hit me, looks like he's trying to set up, putting me at 6 for another 2 drop, you know, 2 to 5 mana play plus Holy Emulation plus Punch. Um, we do not allow him to have that. Um, that play so we got a double body block here unless he has a third Imperian's claim but that doesn't if he has a third Imperian's claim he cannot um, he cannot play uh, what's it called uh, he cannot play um, he cannot play holy emulation um, I actually decide actually think about now this would deny um, his tile he cannot general hit plus holy immolation now. Um, with this positioning, he would have to move here and holy immolate, but that would just result in a uh, revenant lethal. But we do have eight damage on the spectral revenant. Uh, the sun drop elixir kind of sucks, as it is able to heal him up. But with this eight attack revenant, we are able to sneakily find lethal with punish. As you can see, I think we have lethal. I think we have Ethel. Or next turn, maybe. I think next turn we have Ethel. Yeah, I didn't have Ethel. Next turn I have Ethel. Um, I think it was, my assumption was a bit premature. Um, and I decided to heal myself this time, just in case, you know, you could have something like, I don't know, Iron Cliff Holy Immolation. Uh, that doesn't, that doesn't, that wouldn't have killed anyways, but I'm uh, just trying to keep myself relatively healthy. I know Zeran can't kill it, uh, especially out of reach, can't kill me at this sort of reach. He actually plays it Celsius, which is, you know, kind of scary, but it doesn't really matter. We have Punish and Lure in hand, not uh, plus Revenant, so we're able to you know, kind of win there with our uh, lead attack the Revenant. Um, and we actually have exact lethal, um, thanks to the buff from the Phantasm. Um, yeah, so it looks like he's running a very late game uh, store of list. He's not running his, his infamous. Uh, golems list that he's been running, you know, that you've seen him pop the ladder with, um, but nonetheless a very scary list. Um, but yeah, sure, let's go for the next one. We'll be using our wall van art in these next and last two games. We are going first, which kind of stinks, because I would prefer going second against uh, against this list. His list, I uh, would prefer going second, because he does run cards like Imperial Flame, so he has access to the... Uh, He's able to get the 7 mana a lot quicker than, than we can, honestly. 
Um, but our, our play is pretty simple. We just frigid Corona and, you know, call it a turn. Um, if we didn't top deck the uh, frigid Corona, our play probably would have been Hard Sister so we can wrap into uh, Thunderhorn, but we do have a Basilisk. Hmm. And he has two Sunrise Clerics, which is you know, kind of scary. What I think I should have done is, um, you know, let him come to me, because we do win with Warbird um, and our walls, so I think we should have you know, backed off a little bit instead of taking the center here, but um, that's just my opinion. Because we could have denied the 5 mana ramp, we could have played like a here, but he could have just easily punched and traded in um, one of his uh, Sunrise Clerics. But alas, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world, he does have the Martyrdom, so he's able to apply a enormous amount of pressure, obviously. But, um, kinda sucks. It doesn't punch, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I couldn't, I mean, I, I couldn't really clear this Azurite line. It's not as threatening as it is in our gen. Um, so I just decided to play the Azure Herald. Maybe, um, moving here and playing it here would have, uh, cleared it, but that still dies to Holy Emulation plus Tiger Punch, which probably would have been a, a better play, quite honestly. Um, because he was still able to get the Holy Emulation, except this time he was able to keep his, uh, Azurite line alive, because he is on five, uh, the Afterglow, so he's able to get a lot of damage in with that right line, as demonstrated here. And he also plays around the Mana Death Grip, um, forces me to punch it again after putting me so low. So very good play on this part. And so he's able to hit me for there, heal that up, and put me already down to 15 on turn 2. Turn 2, I think. Or no. Turn three um, puts me down low, or, or 15. So turn three, so I was, you know, kind of scary of how you feel about this. Um, so I just decide to uh, frigid Corona this. I can't afford to take any more damage from that thing, honestly. Um, so I just decide to get rid of the um, uh, Sunrise Clark. Uh, in doing so, um, I do deny his access to this orb. Always draw last, guys. <laughs> I should have played the Fritch Grunt first, um, but I think my play still stands as is. So that's that. Um, again, we're pretty low, and he has a lot of healing, so he can be reckless with his face, especially if he has another Holy Immolation. So, yeah, especially if he has Sintilla. Uh, we can't really afford to let that live because he does have his uh, Bloodborne spell next turn. Um, so, uh, with regards to that, I think I just play the Luminous Charge here and the Chromatic Cold. Um, can't afford him to heal up more, really. But I think I know, I take that back. I play the Gravity Wall because I value taking the damage, not taking the damage, over him healing three health. Um, because you can OTK with this list. And again, this is the benefits of going uh, second. Um, he does have access to Empyreon's Claim for EMP um, on our early ramp plays um, because he is always going to be one mana ahead of us, which kind of sucks. So that's pretty much game here. We don't have an aspect of the Shimzar to really take advantage of the Thunderhorn here. Yeah, so uh, we pretty much lose this. I think we lose this game. Um, and we have to face tank this uh, this three damage here, um, which kind of sucks because this is just asking to be holy and Um Actually, no, I chromatic cold this and, and punch this, so we spare we spare two damage. Uh, excuse me, we spare one damage. Um, but yeah, he does have Trinity Guilt, refills his hand. You know, kind of not really what I really wanted to see, especially against uh, um, against this. But he does have. Um, uh, the Sunforge Lantern, which he definitely drew from the um, from the Trinity of, uh, because he probably would have played it beforehand before drawing, um, so he would get that extra attack buff. 
Um, really, there's no way we can survive here um, unless we use both Chromatic Hold and Mana Death Grip, which kind of sucks, because we're already at 9 mana. Um, um, it, but that just keeps us alive, but you know, any sort of damage, Holy Immolation kills us. Another Sunforge Lancer kills us, quite frankly, and um, you know, any sort of burst damage he has just wins the game. Sunriser as well. Uh, Excelsius <laughs> wins in the game, no doubt. I think he just punches us here, because there's no way we can kill him at 24 at an empty board. If we were a Songhai, maybe, but um, yeah, only two cards in hand, we just lose. Um, so, yeah, moving on to, yeah, game three. I don't know, I was trying to look for, uh, I couldn't really look for Lightbender, honestly. Um, because we were one mana short. Um, because Lightbender is an Arcanist, um, and which would have dispelled this, but that really wouldn't have saved us uh, anything, um, even if we could play it. So yeah, it looks like the quests have rolled over. I guess I'll do that uh, after this recording. But anyways, last game? Uh, spoilers, we lose. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is, but we'll go through the match regardless. Hopefully we get... Um, and this is actually where things go downhill. I was pretty uh, um, focused in on this game, and then you'll see what, uh, what tilts me later. Um, a very very bad uh, you know, way to, to lose um, but yeah I, I guess I wanted to show you guys this because um, I thought it was very interesting um, and horrifying to me but you know it is what it is um, he does play the frigid corona so I, I know he's willing uh, wall banner we've been talking about this for for weeks um, amongst us you know what's you know the most optimal banner list like he runs some reflection some wake some iceberg ambush uh, whereas I just run Reflection and, uh, <clears throat> um, I just run Reflection and, uh, what's it called? And Winter's Wake. Um, so, yeah, he was able to clear my, uh, Sentinel, um, you know, with his Chromatic Hold plus Gravity Wall, which kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We do have Thunderhorn plus Aspects of Shimtar in play, so we can probably go about doing those plays. <clears throat> So he can't ramp into anything big. He goes for the Frigid Corona on our Thunderhorn, which kind of sucks because that's the second one. Uh, I've always said that Frigid Corona is kind of broken, but he top decks the Aspect of the Shimtar, which I think he probably should have played uh, last next turn, really. Um, so yeah. Um, I am able to mana Death Grip and freeze him because he would be on uh, 5 mana next turn. I don't want him to ramp into 6, which he could probably play on... Uh, you could play like a Luminous Charge plus BBS, right? You could play a Blue Conjurer plus BBS. I didn't really want that to happen. Um, so, we do top deck two double mana death grips. Uh, a double mana death grip, so we're able to ramp into eight mana. So, if we can tech into something like uh, Winter's Wake, or excuse me, uh, a Grandmaster Emblem, we're pretty much in uh, very good shape. And also, um, we do have the Winter's Wake, but the Blue Conjurer is pretty good as well um, with a bunch of spells we have available for us next turn. But uh, with no walls, I think it would be better to just eliminate the, uh, or replace the Winter's Wake in our hand, uh, trying to look for something like the Seraphim, Grandmaster Embla, etc. But yeah, uh, this uh, Battle Pet is going to bite us in the butt, as it won't die for quite some time now. Um, as I did want access to this uh, this, uh, this mana tile, I decided to play the Blue Conjure here as opposed to here, because um, I don't know if he has like Ghost Seraphim. Um, which he could ramp into next turn. Um, so Ghost Seraphim Winter's Wake could have finished us um, or been or, or set us so far behind. Um, so that's why I Chromatic Cold uh, this bottom tile. It may seem silly, but that play was very likely. Um, some, especially if he has all these walls here. Um, he can play like the he can move here, play the Ghost Seraphim here, and play um, Flawless Reflection, and we'd be boned. We would just lose the game. Um, something it was a risk I had to, you know, avoid. Um, but he has the Thunderhorn. And he's able to clear all of our uh, <clears throat> all of our minions, which kind of sucks. Um, but you know, it's not the end of the world. We're able to play Frostburn, Thunderhorn, and uh, Warbird. Um, so we're able to bounce back relatively easily, clear his board, uh, and I think we're in a decent position. He does have card advantage on us, especially with those two Frigid Coronas. Um, so things are looking uh, are very close at the moment. Um, 
but yeah, he does have Circulus, which kind of sucks. Uh, goes very well with his Flawless Reflection, but he has the second aspect of Shimzar, which kind of sucks. I would have preferred a Chromatic Cold, honestly. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, there's a there's the Chromatic Cold, which, you know, it sucks. But, you know, uh, it is Vanar. They always have the, the answers. So, um, something that you should just, you know, pretty much get used to um, and not get too upset about. Um, but uh, I think I replaced the Gravity Wall. I don't see much use for it here. Um, and I just decide to punch this and play Grandmaster Embla in his face. Reason being is I do want it to, I do want to start pushing some damage because um, the only way we win this um, is if we're ahead on life um, and we can win with Warbird should it come down to a top deck war. Um, so yeah, I think we're in decent position here. Forget what he, forget what he plays. I think he uh, eliminates these two gravity walls as um, I think that's the only play. He doesn't have Frostburn in hand which uh, was a pretty good sign for me. He plays the Ghost Seraphim in his face, in my face, um, as he should. But we do have the answer, um, an aspect of the Shimzar. And he does play the Gravity Wall to play around Winter's Wake Lethals. Um, uh, because I think, I think Gravity, uh, Winter's Wake would be... Hit this one. That would have been lethal. But as you see, I misclick. And I accidentally aspect of Shimzar my own minion. My own Grandmaster Emblem. So I not only do I miss out on five damage, I leave up his five his ghost seraphim. Um and you know I'm just absolutely absolutely devastated, honestly. And I just, you know, pretty much tilts here on out. As you'll see the turned events, I just go downhill. I was like, I was really kicking myself. I didn't you know, I don't really overreact, but like I was just sitting on my chair and I was just like, oh man, did I really just misclick here? Um, in the finals, in the last few turns, but uh, yeah, as the Winter's Wake and Frostburn uh, to prevent any sort of damage here. And he's able to hit me for eight. Oh man. Uh, just watching this uh, over and over again is horrifying. I did have a couple of people on my friends list and was like, "Oh wow, did you uh, that, that misclick really sucks?" And you know, hope it's not too you know too scary and you no know, won't give you nightmares. As this was uh, this finals, I think was at like eleven or twelve o'clock at night, um, so it's kind of scary. And you can see, I just keep misplaying by uh, I cycled back the um, <clears throat> I cycled back the uh, the frigid corona. If I played the Frigid Corona, this was, uh, it would have prevented me from. Oh, man. Just, just re-watching this is, uh, horrifying. <laughs> hey, but, you know, I had it, I lost to a friend, so, you know, it's, in, it's always in good fun. So, yeah, guys, you know, we come up short in the finals. Um, if we didn't misclick there, I think we would have had, uh, it would have been safe to say we had a good chance of, uh, of winning because the Frostburn um, would have done a decent amount of damage to him, so we would have been ahead on life. Um, tough to say because he did have the double hearth sister. Um, you know, but it is what it is. It is duelist. We all have those days, and... Uh, where we don't play as optimally, or if one mistake happens, you know, it just leads to another and it goes down there. So you just gotta you know, take some time off, uh, or just bounce back. You know, it is it's a game after all. But yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the weekly duels tournament, and I encourage you guys to come out and play. The links are in the description as well as the deck list. And um, again, I will be doing regular and daily duelist uploads here on out now that I have returned. Um, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. So yeah, guys, have a good Thursday and I'll catch you guys later.